If your skills in web development and understanding of CSS have tracked alongside the improvements made inside Generate Blocks over the last couple years, then you probably just wrapped your mind around Flexbox and all of a sudden we get CSS Grid. I've seen a lot of people resistant to using Grid and relying on Flexbox in layouts where it's actually a whole lot more work. Now that's not to say that Grid is better than Flexbox, but they do have different behaviors. If you understand the way both of them work, then you can choose the one that's more appropriate to your layout and have to do less workarounds and be less frustrated by trying to get things to lay out the way you want to on your site. Now it's true that CSS Grid is more modern and has some more advanced features and some real superpowers that can come in handy, but you don't have to start out by using all those advanced features. At its core, it's actually pretty simple to work with. So in this video, I'm gonna show you two different layouts and we're gonna try laying them out with both Flexbox and with Grid. In each of these, you're gonna see some advantages for grids for specific layout and for Flexbox and other type layouts. Hopefully by the end of this video, you'll have a better understanding of where it might be more advantageous to use CSS Grid or Flexbox depending on the layout you're trying to achieve. If that sounds interesting to you, then stick around and let's get started. So I have this setup here where we have a section, a wrapper, which is just constraining my content width of the website. And then we have three cards inside of it. You can see each one of them have an icon, a heading, and some text. And what we want to do here is have a three column layout to start with. So CSS Grid makes this pretty easy because you're going to control those columns on the parent. So the parent of these cards or the parent of the columns is this wrapper. So what we need to do here is just go under layout. We change this to display grid. And as you can see, nothing happens right away when you change it to CSS grid, which can be kind of confusing when you're first getting started, because if you're used to using Flexbox, you know that if you change this to display flex, everything would change right away. However, with grid, we need to add one additional thing here. So we'll go here under our grid layout and we have our grid template columns. Now you're free to type in your grid template column declaration here, but Generate Blocks has provided some presets that are pretty handy. So we see we have things like a one column layout, two column layout, three column layout, and so on. We even have some uneven layouts here as well. Now in this case, I have three cards, so I think it makes sense to start with a three column layout. So we'll just go ahead and click that, and we can see that all of our cards are now in three even columns. Now they're kind of squished up against each other, so I am gonna go ahead and add some gap here. We'll maybe just put 40 pixels of gap, both for the column and the row gap, in case we ever want to expand this grid out further. Now you might be thinking that's quite a few more clicks than what we'd have to do if we did this with flex. But let's go ahead and duplicate this section here. I'm gonna go ahead and duplicate this. We'll go back onto this wrapper and we'll get rid of the work we did to set up the grid. So I'm gonna go ahead and get rid of all the gap and the grid template rows. And we're gonna change this back to our default. So we're back to the starting place we had before. This time I'm gonna use flex to do it. So we'll go in here, we'll go under display and we'll choose flex. And you can see right away, we got our three column layout, which didn't happen when we just changed this to display grid. Now they are kind of smushed up against each other. So I'll do the same thing here and add 40 pixels of gap. And you can see now they have a nice space between them. So for flex, there was actually one less step. We didn't have to set up the rows explicitly. We just had to tell it it was flex and it nicely put them all next to each other. However, when you have layouts like this, there's a couple gotchas when you're working with flex that don't exist with CSS grid. And I wanna point a couple of those out here. Now, the first thing you might be noticing is these columns aren't perfectly lining up. It's just a hair off on all of these. And I'm gonna show you what's happening here. I think it's gonna be easier to do this in the inspector. So I'm gonna go ahead and open this up on the front end. And we can see something just seems off about the way these two different rows are laying out. This top one is using CSS grid and this bottom one is using Flexbox. So let's open up the inspector here and take a look. So I'm just gonna grab my little pointer tool here and I'm gonna hover over each one of these cards. In the little tooltip that's popping up at the top, you can see that it says it's 400 pixels wide. If I go over the next card, it's also 400 pixels. And if I go over the next card, it's also 400 pixels. So we know these are all exactly the same size and we have even columns in our grid layout. However, if I go over the cards inside of our Flexbox layout, you can see this first card is 416.72. Seems a little bit odd, but maybe they're all 416.72. We'll go over the next card and we can see it's actually at 376.59. And if we go over the last card here, it's at 406.69. So even though this looks like we have a three column layout, we don't have three even columns. 
The size of each one of these columns in the flex layout is actually being determined by the child itself. In CSS Grid, the parent is actually deciding how wide those columns are gonna be and making sure that all the children fit. Flexbox just works a little bit differently where it's going to let the children influence how big those columns are. Now, of course, there are ways to fix this using Flex. So let's go back into the editor here. We'll go into our Flex section. In fact, let's just go ahead and rename this so we don't get confused. We'll call this our Flex section here. And we'll go up here and rename this. And this is going to be our Grid section. Now, we don't actually have Grid and Flex set on the section, but just to keep track of which section we're using which technique. Now we want these to be even columns so our eyes don't twitch. So we're gonna have to do something to all of these children in order to get them to all behave the same. So I'm gonna go ahead and select all three cards by clicking the first one, holding down shift and clicking the last one. And we'll go over here into our layout and we'll open our flex layout here. If we want these to all be the same, a good trick for doing that is setting the flex grow to one, the flex shrink to zero and the flex basis to zero. Now, if we go ahead and save this again, and we'll refresh on the front end. If we hover over each one of these boxes now, you can see each one of these are now 400 pixels wide. So we've solved our problem, and now the flex layout is behaving like we'd want it to, because we want three even columns, not three wonky columns. And for some layouts, this might be perfect, but I wanna show you a few places where CSS Grid actually is gonna make this easier to scale and grow and manipulate as we change the site. So let's go back into the editor here. And the first thing I wanna do is just duplicate the amount of cards we have in each one of these sections. So instead of three cards, I wanna have six cards. I wanna maintain those three columns, but I wanna have six cards in them. So I'm gonna select all three of these here and I'm gonna use Shift Command D on my keyboard to duplicate them. And we'll do the same thing down here in our flex section, select all three of them and press Command Shift D so I can duplicate that and end up with six cards. Now you can see here, I'll get all the UI out of the way. CSS Grid and Flexbox definitely handled this quite a bit differently. CSS Grid gave us what I was after. I wanted to keep these three columns, but I just wanted to add another row of three more cards underneath it. However, Flexbox handled this quite a bit differently, just adding those three cards on the same line, which in this particular layout doesn't look good. Now there are times when you're gonna actually prefer this flex behavior, so I don't wanna make this video saying that CSS Grid is superior to flex, but I think there's a lot of layouts like this where CSS Grid just makes it a whole lot easier to manage. We didn't need to do anything to our CSS Grid section in order to get this layout working the way we want to, but we're gonna to have to do some work here to our flex section to get it behave the same. So we'll go back here into our flex section and I'm gonna select our wrapper here. I know one thing we're gonna to need to do is set this flex to wrap so that our cards will wrap onto multiple lines. But as you can see, that didn't actually change anything here. It was just something we needed to set up in order to make those changes. Since the children of this flex container are really controlling how wide they are, we need to go back and select every one of these flex children and go back into our flex layout section here. Right now we have this flex basis set to zero. We're gonna have to play with this number in order to get this to be a three column layout. So you might think right away that maybe we could do something like 33%. That way it takes up 33, 33, and 33. But you can see as we do that, it's actually putting these into two columns. And that's because we're not accounting for this gap in the middle here. So what we're telling this is make all of these 33% but it can't put three next to each other because we have 33 plus 33 plus 33 plus the gap in between all of them, which equals to more than 100%. So in order to get this down to a three column layout, you could start playing around with things like changing this to 30%. But of course, if we change that gap between them, we're gonna have to go back and adjust these numbers as well. The same thing's gonna be true if we wanna make this two column or let's say four column. If I want to make this a two column layout, I'm gonna to have to bump up this flex basis number until we get something where we actually end up with two columns. If I wanted to make it four columns, we're gonna to have to bring this down quite a bit. But as you can see here, flex is actually stretching these bottom two cards. Now this is a pretty cool thing flex does and it will help even out some of these layouts. If you wanna do this kind of thing with CSS grid, it's a little bit more difficult though it's not impossible. But let's take a look at what would happen in our grid section if we wanted to change this to two columns or four columns. Instead of playing around with all those magic numbers, we'd just go back into our grid layout here and change this repeat value. So instead of three for three columns, we'd just change it to two for two columns and automatically we get the two column layout. 
If we want four columns, we change this to repeat four and we get four even columns. Now, like I said, Flex is doing this thing where it's stretching out these last two columns here, which in some cases you're gonna want and some cases you might not want. Both Flex and Grid are gonna come into play in just about every website you build. But if you're building something where you want a rigid structure and you want all of your children to kind of fall in line to that structure, CSS Grid is just less of an uphill battle than Flex is. In order to get Flex to behave this way, we really have to do some workarounds and some magic numbering to get it working exactly the way we want. Whereas with CSS Grid, it's pretty straightforward to just change the value of the repeats. But let me show you a scenario where the opposite of that is true. Here I've set up a layout where I wanna have a row of logos of let's say sponsors or partners. So I've gone ahead and created a section with a wrapper just like we did before. Inside of that right now we have five containers. Each one of these containers has an image inside of it. I wanna put all of these on a single row and have them space out nicely. So I'll go here to my wrapper. We'll go into our settings, into layout, and we're gonna change this to display flex. Right away, it put all of these in a single line, which is just what we wanted, but we wanna space these out nice and evenly. Now, I don't know how much gap I want in between all these as far as a fixed value. I'd like the CSS to just figure that out for me and space these all out nice and evenly. And Flex is really great at stuff like that. So let's go here into our Flex alignment. First of all, I wanna make sure all of these are aligned center. So if we click the Align Center button, you can see they're all aligned center vertically now. As far as putting the space between all of them, we can go here to our space between under justify content. And as soon as we do that, it just evens out the space in between each one of these logos, which is exactly the look I'm going for here. And on top of that, if I decided I wanted to add another logo to this, I could just duplicate this last one and it's gonna refactor all that spacing and keep all of these nice and even. But let's try doing this with CSS grid and see if we can achieve the same kind of layout just as easily. I'm gonna go ahead and duplicate this section here. We'll make sure to go to our wrapper and under layout, I'm gonna get rid of these align items and justify content and we'll put this back to its default display. I also had this extra logo here. I'm gonna go ahead and get rid of that so we start just where we started before. Now this time I'm gonna use CSS grid so under display I'm gonna change this to grid. Right now we have five different logos. So under the grid template columns, I can go in here and choose a repeat that has five, which is this one down here. Now this has spaced everything out, but as you can see, the space doesn't look equal. What CSS grid has done because it creates that rigid structure is it's made five even columns, no matter how wide the logo is. A skinnier logo like Kinsta, it gets the same space it can take up as a logo like Patch Stack, which is much longer. In a layout like this, that's not what you want because these things don't look even anymore. Now they're all left aligned, but even if I went into all these containers and changed it to center align, you can see the spacing still feels off. This first one isn't getting pushed all the way to the end and neither is the last one, and the spacing still just doesn't look quite right. This is even worse if we wanna add another logo here. You can see by duplicating that last logo, because we have this set up to be only five columns, it's added a new row here, which is not what we wanted in this layout. So after duplicating that, I'd have to go back to our grid here and change this repeat to six instead of five, which is extra work I'd have to do every time. So it's not really an argument about what is better, flex or CSS grid, it's what's more appropriate for the situation. By leaning into some of the default behaviors, you can choose the layout that's more appropriate for whatever you're trying to achieve. If you want the children to influence a size like we did here in this logo layout, going with something like Flexbox and being able to align things and set the space between works really, really well. We could of course spend 20 minutes manipulating the CSS grid to get it to work, and I think we could do that, but we'd be fighting an uphill battle in order to do it, whereas Flexbox default behavior gives us exactly what we want. And the same thing was true with this even column layout. CSS grid gave us exactly what we wanted out of the box. We could achieve the same thing with Flexbox, but it takes a whole lot more work. Of course, this is just scratching the surface in both of these layout properties. There's caveats and gotchas and nuances to all of these different layout properties and the different things you can do with them. The best way to learn is to experiment with both of them. I think if you spend a little bit more time with CSS Grid, you'll start to figure out ways where it just makes more sense and makes your life easier than using Flexbox. And of course, along the way, you're gonna find some places where Grid really doesn't make sense and Flexbox is just a better way to go. I wish there were some hard and fast rules I could give you that would make it easier to understand whether it's more appropriate to use Grid or Flexbox in a situation. However, there's nuance to all the rules that people have tried to come up with. 
The best mental model that's helped me is thinking of a shelf. If I want to build the shelf itself, CSS Grid is usually going to be easier to do. However, if I want to arrange all the items on the shelf, Flexbox is going to do a better job of that. Now that's not applicable to every single layout, but that concept might help you get a better understanding of where you might want to start, even though you might have to backtrack and go the other way. Now today we just touch on some of the basics of CSS Grid using the controls that are here inside of Generate Blocks, but like I said earlier, CSS Grid has some really advanced superpowers. This would include things like making things automatically responsive so you don't have to set different media queries or breakpoints for things. You can overlap content in really interesting ways, or even create bento grid layouts with ease in ways that Flexbox would be really, really difficult. I'll put some links down in the description for some videos where I've learned some of these techniques, but I'd be really interested to hear if you'd like to see me teach some of these here in the context of Generate Blocks. Let me know down in the comments below, and I can plan out some future content where we take a deeper dive into some of the more advanced techniques. If you enjoyed today's video, I would really appreciate a thumbs up, and if you want to make sure to catch the next one, hit subscribe, and we'll see you then.